breaking news, the University of Cincinnati has been invited to join the Big 12. Along with the University of Houston, Central Florida, and Brigham Young, these four schools look to join the Big 12 no later than 2024. And you know what that means, folks? We have a Power 5 school to talk about during college sports. It's really too bad we haven't had one to talk about yet, but... Congrats to UC joining the Big 12. This is the Cincinnati and Dayton Sports Podcast with Lee W. Mowen, a weekly audio podcast that covers everything sports in the Dayton and Cincinnati, Ohio region. No faffing around, no unnecessary chatter, no focusing on that school in Columbus like other shows, just good, honest, local sports happening in Southwest Ohio, Northern Kentucky, and East Central Indiana. Be sure to bookmark SinDayPod.com for ways to listen and podcast merchandise. Theme song by Kevin McLeod on FreePD.com. Here's your host, Lee W. Mallon. So, yes, fresh off the news press just about a few minutes ago and live on this newest edition of the local Cincinnati and Dayton Sports Podcast. It's a shame you can't hear or read about local Dayton sports anymore in Dayton, but what can you do? Anyway, a little bit more about UC to the Big 12. This will happen as late as 2024, and there will be at least one year of overgap with Texas and Oklahoma leaving for the SEC in 2025, and the four schools, three coming from the American Athletic Conference, no later than 2024. So what Houston, UCF, and UC must do will involve a 27-month notice, so uh, about two years and three months, and also pay a $10 million exit penalty. So UC is going to be a Power 5 school. How about that? And current Big 12 members include Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Texas Christian, Texas Tech, and West Virginia. So, yay, West Virginia and UC rivalry heats back up. I can't wait, especially for men's basketball season, if Bob Huggins is still around with the Mountaineers. I still like this time with UC, but, yeah, I I think this is a great move for UC, and just not only for the Bearcats, but Cincinnati as a whole. You know, put Cincinnati on the map. I definitely enjoy that. This article is from Fox 19. Jarrett Goffinet and Trevor Peters published this article about 14 minutes ago now. And the Bearcats are now in a Power 5 football conference. By right now, I mean not till 2024 at the latest, but they're making the jump. And that is so exciting to me. Again, get to talk about Power 5 school. It's a shame we don't have any others around here, but what can you do? So that's a nice way to start off the episode as we now jump into football scores. We'll stick with college, actually, since we're on the topic of UC. And the number eight Bearcats handed Miami a loss 49 to 14 for the victory bell. UC's had the victory bell at Clifton since 2005. And the Bearcats just rolled on. Desmond Ritter had himself a game at quarterback. And Evan Prater also had a couple of touchdowns late. He had a flipping touchdown into the end zone. And that was the last score of the game for UC, the former Wyoming Cowboy. And the Bearcats rolled 49-14. to And some of the other colleges playing football. The Wilmington Quakers, they fell in overtime to Southern Virginia, 41-34. Great battle by the Quakers, just not enough to take down Southern Virginia at home. And the Wittenberg Tigers, they fall to SUNY Cortland, 38-16. In Cincinnati, Mount St. Joseph falls to Albion, 36-20. Thomas Moore defeats Bluefield, 45-33. The only win out of the local Sunday college teams. And back on August 28th, yes, I know, I missed this. Kentucky State defeated Central State, 20-6. Played at that team in Columbus. Which a very big deal. And Central State getting some much-needed time on air. It's a great historical college. And I hope to see more out of the Marauders. 
All these teams will be in action. The club teams will be in action. Wright State's, they get their 2021 schedule off this Saturday against the Ohio Rage, formerly the Ohio Crush. It's that semi-pro team in New Carlisle. So it'll be interesting to see how football roams around. NFL scores, well, there was one as the season opened up with a 31-29 Tampa Bay win over Dallas. The Bengals start this Sunday against Minnesota. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But first, let's head to high school football scores for week three. But first, a little tidbit of news. The Eastern Cincinnati Conference recently decided to go to a one non-conference schedule, meaning there'll be nine conference games. And there's 10 schools, so everyone's got to play each other, which, you know, if you think about it, you look at the negatives and... You know, maybe you wanted to schedule a tougher non-conference slate to get some points and maintain a playoff spot, which I get that. But then again, the ECC is pretty jam-packed. Winton Woods, Turpin, Kings in there. I, I think, you know, nine conference games, that's a great idea. Therefore, everyone has to play each other at least once. So you can expect that next year, not this year. We haven't fully hit into conference slate, but there are a few games involving some leagues. But we're going to start with the non-conference tilts first. Followed up with a Thursday night affair. Meadowdale had a 40 to nothing lead against Hillcrest at Welcome Stadium. And that's how the Lions won. 40 to nothing over Hillcrest. In a game that was supposed to be a GMC opener for Princeton at home. Turned out to be an away non-conference tilt at Dublin Kaufman. And Dublin Kaufman not allowing the visiting broadcasters, that would be me, to make the trip. The Vikings scored 34 unanswered points to close the half and take it from Dublin Kaufman 44-14. The host Shamrocks scored the first and last touchdowns of the game, but Princeton riled off 44 points in between to go to 3-0. Elsewhere, Ross defeated Valley View coming from behind 21-17. Waynesville rolls over Blanchester 42-13. Monroe 66, Western Brown 58. In the Battle of the Christian Schools, Troy Christian prevails over Dayton Christian 48-24. It's Bellbrook 28, Tecumseh 9. Hamilton Baden 35, Northwest 0. Dunbar takes down Beaver Creek 34-15. Brookville shuts out the Bethel Bees 42-0. In a former SWBL Buckeye Division battle, it was Carlisle defeating Northridge 14-6. Franklin picks up their first win of the year by edging off Edgewood 17-15. Clinton Massey flies over Fenwick 44-0 in the Battle of the Falcons. Miamisburg 33, Alter 14. A great Sports Center top 10 worthy catch by the Vikings as Miamisburg rolls along. Bloom Carroll, 23. Jonathan Alder, 3. Delphos Jefferson, 35. Lima Perry, 30. London, 48. Marion Franklin, 6. Oakwood, 28. Milton Union, 20. Miami East, 30. Northwestern, 15. It's Madeira over Purcell Marion, 15 to 12. Buckeye Central edges out Ridgemont, 20 to 14. It's Indian Lake over Riverside, 48 19. Roger Bacon takes down Kentucky foe Newport Central Catholic, 48 13. Centerville falls for the first time this year to Gehanna Lincoln as the Golden Lions score in the last moments, 26-24. It's Fort Loramie taking down Covington, 42-25. Eaton 3-0. They edge out Talawanda in overtime, 27-17. Wayne falls for the first time this year to Canton McKinley, 28-12. It's Kettering Fairmont, 3-0, knocking off Chaminade Julian, 24-7. St. Xavier rolls along against Olentangy Liberty and Northern Columbus, 49-0. Wyoming defeats Norwood, 36-4. Redding over Summit Country Day, 35-7. Marymont defeats Williamsburg, 33-0. It's Finneytown, 43. St. Bernard Elmwood plays 6. Fayetteville storms over New Miami, 56-0. The Vikings are 0-3 on the year. East Clinton, 33. Hillsborough, 14 Batavia 21, Claremont Northeastern 7. Mount Healthy scratches a win against Wilmington 26 23. 
McNicholas, big over Cincinnati Hills Christian Academy, 41 to nothing. It's Portsmouth over Deer Park, 56-29. Bethel Tate over Taylor, 28-16. Cincinnati College Prep defeats Woodward, 32-16. North College Hill defeats Landmark Christian, 20-14. Worthington Christian over Miami Valley Christian, 30-16. It's Cincinnati Country Day soaring over Doran Prep, 44-6. Hughes over Lachlan, 44-6. Elder defeats Beacon Hill out of Virginia, 47-0. Bowler defeats East Central Indiana, 39-22. The Crusaders are 3-0. Withrow, 44. Ponex, 0. Taft, 30. Indian Hill, 15. IMG Academy, real deal over LaSalle, 57-7. And yes, LaSalle, a real school in Cincinnati. Springfield over Lima Senior, 46-6 in a Saturday game. And the Battle of Montessori's gambles over Clark, 26-0. We head to our first conference bouts, the Western Ohio Athletic Conference. Most of the schools from the Cross County Conference. Tri Village defeats Twin Valley South 41 to 6. Tri County North picks up their first win of the year by defeating Bradford 34 to 16. Preble Shawnee 3 and 0. They defeat National Trail 41 to nothing. And Sonia shuts out Dixie 34 to nothing. And Arcanum roars over Mississippi Valley 52 to nothing. To the Miami Valley League, the Thursday night game in Dayton was Stebbins, 41, West Carrollton, 8. Xenia, 40 points better than Fairborn, 42-2. Tippecanoe takes down Vandalia Butler, 34-7. It's Sydney, 28, Greenville, 14. And Piqua defeats Troy, 28-7 on a Saturday night. I got to hear the call from Michael Hearn on WPTW. Great job as always, my friend. And now we move on to the Central Buckeye Conference. Just two conference games listed on here. Bell Fountain defeats Urbana 28 to nothing, and Kenton Ridge over Ben Logan 52 28. In the Ohio Heritage Conference, it's Triad 52, Cedarville 10, Northeastern 19, Greenview 7, West Jefferson 24, Green and 7, Mechanicsburg thrashes Mass and Plains 50 to 14, and Springfield Catholic Central 3 0 on the year. They knock off West Liberty Salem 32 to 20. Up north in the Western Buckeye League, it's Lima Shawnee shutting out Salina 27 0. Van Wert rolls big over Defiance 55 18. It's Ottawa Glandorf defeating Elida 28 7. Wapkaneta, a field goal better than St. Mary's 10 7. And Lima Bath 43, Kenton 13. In the Midwest Athletic Conference, first loss of the year to Vassales. They fall to an always great Marion local team. Flyers 19, Tigers 17. Anna 48, Parkway 17. Coldwater defeats Fort Recovery 42-6. New Bremen 42, Delph of St. John's 14. And St. Henry 40, Minster 28. Rolling on further down the Cincinnati we go. In the Greater Miami Conference, most of the teams got a chance to start off GMC play. Pity that Princeton didn't because Hamilton second week of their COVID quarantine. But Lakota West, 43, Oak Hill, 17, Cole Rain, 21, Mason, 16, Lakota East, big winners over Middletown, 49-7, and Sycamore, 42, Fairfield, 18. In the Eastern Cincinnati Conference, one that most fans probably had their eyes on, Kings and Witten Woods, the Knights defeat the Warriors, 14-13. Remember, this is the game last year that was supposed to happen, but COVID struck, it got canceled, and it was never made up. Anderson defeats Little Miami in overtime, 43-42. Milford, 34. Walnut Hills, 8. West Claremont, 19. Lebanon, 17. And Turpin comes from behind. Loveland had a lead late in the fourth, but it's the Spartans knocking off the Loveland Tigers, 38-34. And that's all the conference games. I believe that's all the Cincinnati and Dayton scores. If I missed one, I do apologize. But unfortunately, it's been a very, very busy week. And yours truly is now a full-time stepdad, which is not unfortunate. That is very fortunate. But that really messes up my schedule. But then again, my schedule is a big old dumpster fire full of work. I shouldn't say dumpster fire. That's not the right term, but you get what I'm going with this. Let's head to Indiana to talk about those Hoosier high school scores. First up in the North Central Conference, Richmond shut out by Indianapolis Arsenal Tech 35-0. 
Heading on to the Tri-Eastern Conference, two non-conference tilts as South Putnam defeats Tri 29-6 and Centerville and the Bulldogs defeat Park Tudor 28-13. Conference games will start with the Unions. Union City defeats Hagerstown 25-9 and Union County over Knightstown 46-7. And last up, it's Northeastern 28, Winchester 8. In the Eastern Indiana Athletic Conference, a couple non-conference games in the mix. Franklin County 54, Rushville 0, Lawrenceburg 63, Milan 13, Scottsburg 40, Connorsville 12, and South Dearborn 24, Batesville 17. And now on to Norfolk, Kentucky. First up, it's Newport over Pendleton County 7-0. Highlands defeats Campbell County 42-7. Dayton over Western Hills. I had to double check. It's listed as Kentucky, but the only Western Hills I know is in the Cincinnati Metro Athletic Conference. But Dayton wins it 14-6. In the Battle of the Catholic Schools, it's Lexington Catholic over Covington Catholic 34-27. Dixie Heights defeats Connor 42-26. Ryo 14, Cooper 7 in the Battle of Union. Holmes 28, Boone County 14. Beachwood shuts out Somerset 49-0. Scott, 48, Holy Cross, 12, Walton, Verona, 35, Grant County, 21, and Lloyd, 31, Providence, Indiana, 21. And that concludes all your scores for week three of high school football. And now we head from the gridiron for just a bit to talk. Baseball playoffs in the Cincinnati and Dayton area. Yes, the regular season is still occurring, but we have two teams battling for a playoff spot, the Cincinnati Reds and the Dayton Dragons. Now, if you were to ask me out of these two squads, which one has the better shot at making the playoffs, I'd probably tell you the Reds at this point because the season ends after next Sunday for the Dragons. But... And also, there's less playoff spots available for the Dragons compared to, you know, Major League Baseball. But I think the Reds can turn around. They really need to take this series at St. Louis. I don't know, five straight series losses. That that puts a worry in me. I'm not going to lie. So we'll start off by talking about the Dayton Dragons. Currently 57 and 54. It's been a rough go around for Dayton for a little while now. For the Dragons, 29 and 28 away from home, sweet home. They fell at Lake County last night, 9 to 8. I listened to that game on the way home. The Dragons are currently 15 back of first place in the High A Central. Now, you might wonder 15 games with nine games left. Lee, what are you talking about? There's no way they get a playoff spot. So how it normally happens, or how it normally happened in the Midwest League, you would have your first half winner and your first half wild card. And then in the second half, you'd have the same, the winner and wild card. So half the teams got in, half the teams didn't. This time around, the high A central, hopefully this does not stick. Two teams get in the playoffs and they play for the championship. And it doesn't matter if they're from the same division. It just matters that they have the best and second best records. Which, I don't like it, but to be fair, you go back to the start of the season, there wasn't really any talks of playoffs. So, eh, it's better than nothing. So again, it doesn't matter which division you're in. Just matters if you have the two best records and then you play, think it's a best of five championship. Might be best of three. I don't remember. But right now, the Quad Cities River Bandits, they're the high A affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. And they have a 71 and 38 record. Yeah, Quad Cities has been really good this year. And I'm still proud of Dayton taking the series 42 at home. But, you know. It is what it is there. Second place at the moment, up by a game over Great Lakes and Lake County and up by four games over Dayton, are the Cedar Rapids Colonels. They're a Minnesota Twins affiliate, sitting at 61-50. and 50. Then you have the Los Angeles Dodgers affiliate and the Great Lakes Loons and the Cleveland Indians, soon to be Guardians, affiliate of the Lake County Captains, sitting at 60-51. and 51. 
Dayton really needs to win the next three games of Lake County. I, I don't want to mince words here. They need to win the next three games. But Lake County has been a thorn on the dragon side this year. It's been tough to muster wins. Lake County just offensively and pitching wise, they're solid. I mean, Dayton is too, but again, it's a late. This hasn't been the same Dragons team we've witnessed over the past few months. Uh, you might start to argue that the turn of the spiral downwards, August, maybe after the call up of Francisco or Baez, who no one expected him to rock as much as he did. He still had an average around 333 by the time he got promoted to Chattanooga. And, you know, yes, Matt McClain, the first round draft this year for the Cincinnati Reds and the supplemental pick Matt Nelson were in town. Well, Nelson's heard he got I think he got crossed up and his thumb kind of got broke in the process. So he hasn't been able to play much. In fact, just a few games and then the injury, then bam, he's out. Matt McClain's done pretty well, and also Alan Serta, he's joined the Dragons. He's looked pretty good, but at the same time, it's just, no, they're not playing as sharp as they once did. So Dayton, again, 15 back of first. There's no way anyone's catching up to Quad Cities, especially considering the fact there are a total of nine games left in the season. And Dayton, currently four back of Cedar Rapids, and needing to go five uh, needing five games to jump the Colonels or else it's all over. So pretty much it's going to be playoff watch for the next series and a half since we're halfway through the Lake County series up in East Lake and then Fort Wayne in town, Fort Wayne 52 and 59 and they've lost seven of the last 10 have the 10 caps. One thing I'm not looking forward to is even though the tin caps got a brand new look with jerseys with legible numbers, nah, we'll wear the ones that you can barely read. But I digress. So it's not impossible for the Dragons, but Dayton really needs a lot of bounces their way. Again, the last home series will be starting the 14th this upcoming Tuesday, lasting until the 19th. And then that's the season. If you don't make the playoffs, that's a season. Talk to you hopefully in April again. But So Dayton still with a chance. Just needing a lot of bounces their way to jump three teams. The last one being Cedar Rapids. As we now look into baseball, Major League Baseball standings. Look at the NL Central. Cincinnati still second in the Central. 12 games back of Milwaukee, who's really dominated this year. The Brewers 86 and 55, Cincinnati 74 and 67. The Reds have started to go on a nosedive. I mentioned losing the last four series. Hopefully not making it five straight series down. But seven of the last ten have been losses. And the Reds lead over St. Louis. Two games in both the NL Central and the wild card. In fact, the Reds are half, excuse me, a whole game back. Of that second spot. Plenty of time to turn it around. Yes, but you can't dwaddle. I will mention the elimination number for the Cubs stands at one. So another loss for Chicago and boop, there go the Cubs. Oh, well, you hate to see it. No, actually, I'd love to see it, but there you go. What's left in the season? Well, I'm glad you asked. So I mentioned St. Louis on the road starting tonight at 8.15 our time, 7.15 their time, central time, and then 7.15 our time tomorrow and 2.15 Sunday afternoon. And then three at Pittsburgh and then a homestand of, excuse me, 10 games. Three against the Los Angeles Dodgers, who you might know they're, in the NL West, battling hard. I think they have the top wild card spot. We'll check it again in a sec. Pittsburgh for three and Washington for four. Dodger series is going to be tough, but Reds won two or three out there in Los Angeles. So who's to say? And then two games at the Chicago White Sox, three at Pittsburgh. 
So outside the St. Louis series on the road, the Dodgers series at home, these are winnable series. I mean, yes, the White Sox on the road as well. Every series has to be a must win. It has to be. You can't keep losing series and expect to make the playoffs. Now with San Diego still lurking, St. Louis is only two back. Excuse me, St. Louis is only two back. Oh, didn't realize I opened a new tab. Silly me. So let's look at the wild card standings. That's the thing we want to talk about most. So right now in the NL, it would be San Francisco, Milwaukee, and Atlanta representing their divisions, West, Central, and East. The wild card teams, both from the West, LA and San Diego with Cincinnati game back, St. Louis three back, Philadelphia three and a half back, the Mets five back, and the Cubs ten back. But remember, the Cubs elimination number is one. So it's still possible for the Reds. Let's look at San Diego's schedule a bit. I think mm-hmm. I think the Dodgers have the top wild card spot locked up. 13 up. Yeah. I think the Dodgers should be fine unless there is a horrendous meltdown of epic proportions, but I don't see that happening. So what's left for San Diego, you might ask? Three at the Dodgers, four at the Giants, three at the Cardinals, then three at home against San Francisco, technically four against Atlanta, but The first one on Friday is a continuation of suspended game from Atlanta. So Atlanta will be the home team. And it's bottom fifth. The Padres up five to four. Another three games set at the Dodgers. And then a three game set at San Francisco. So, yeah, I think Cincinnati will have the inside track just because the series are more winnable. I mean, Dodgers and Giants, whew. They have been battling each other quite hard. And Giants have really, really done well, which is nice to see. In case you're wondering about the American League, right now your division leaders are Tampa Bay, Houston, and the White Sox. Your wildcard teams are from the East, Boston, and the Yankees. Actually, you think the wildcard race in the NL is tough? <laughs> Let me tell you about the AL. The Red Sox have a game up on the Yankees. And Toronto is a half game out of the wild card chase. Oakland is two out with Seattle. Wow, Seattle is two out. And it's September the 10th. Wow, the Mariners really, really done well. Cleveland eight back. Angels nine back. Tigers 12 and a half. Kansas City 15 back. Minnesota 16 back. Texas, they're eliminated. Also Baltimore too, but. There you go. So Pittsburgh and Arizona, the only eliminated teams in the NL. Like I said, I think the Reds can pull it off, but you're going to need some wins, and you're going to need wins now. You can't lose another series. You just can't. I know St. Louis is tough. I know you're at St. Louis. You got to take, you know what, take three out of three. What you really need is two out of three, and... Hope that the Giants and Dodgers can continue to keep the Padres down for you. But San Diego is a great squad. I mean, this could be the year the Padres get back in the playoffs. But we'll wait and see. I will have to say this. At least baseball in Cincinnati is exciting again. It's always a pleasure to see the Reds do well. And it's nice to talk about it when the Reds are actually doing well. You know what's just occurred to me? We really haven't talked about the MLS teams in the area. Now, I will go ahead and say I'm not doing Columbus Area High School scores for football this year. I know, I know, people liked it last year, but heck, it's enough to keep up with Cincinnati and Dayton scores along with, let's see, Eastern Indiana, Southeastern Indiana, Northern Kentucky, and the Lima area, so... That's a lot of scores right there. And plus my limited time, it's hard to make them all nice and organized and everything. But the one Columbus team we will talk about is the crew. 
That's right, the Columbus crew. Also the Blue Jackets, I guess, but they normally disappoint. So normally I don't talk about the Blue Jackets. But we do talk about the crew here. And it's a rough year for both Ohio teams. Yes, I know. A lot of injuries for Columbus. That's why I'd say it's rough. Also, that's why the chapter name is MLS2K21. Not very nice in Ohio. The crew currently sit one... Actually, excuse me. Three points back. Uh, so I guess a B1 match. Three points back of the last playoff spot, which is currently occupied by DC United. And FC Cincinnati sits in second to last. Again. And in fact, Cincinnati's taking on Toronto FC to make sure that they don't fall completely to the bottom again. It's just, it, it's heartbreaking to see how passionate FC Cincinnati fans are, and yet no wins. Four losses and five draws at home. And you open up a brand new stadium this year in the West End. And you can only go 3, 10, and 8. Yeah. You know, I, I get why FC Cincinnati was quick to get an MOS. I really do. But I, anymore, I, I say it's too quick. It was too quick of a process. Get everything in order. Make sure you have people that know how to run an MLS team. Nothing here has convinced me of that. It breaks my heart. I mean, heck, how many head coaches has FC Cincinnati already been through? Not counting USL, but just MLS and now looking for a new GM. Because Gerald Niedkamp left. He was the gentleman that kind of got into the West End Stadium. Sorry, TQL Stadium off the ground, and also the Milford, sorry, Milford FC Cincinnati training grounds. But just, it's heartbreaking to see FC Cincinnati at the bottom each and every year so far. I'm hoping year four is better, but I don't know. Now for the crew, I was really excited just because how much depth they have, but man, injuries have really hit Columbus hard. 7, 10, and 6. 5-3-3 Five three and three at home, which is great, especially with their new lower dot com field, which is beautiful, and also the home of OHSAA soccer finals. By the way, I was hoping it would go to Cincinnati, but that's me being a Cincinnatian for you. But both fields are beautiful, and hopefully TQL stadiums evolved in regionals or something like that, as they should be. Right now, you're seven teams in the Eastern Conference. If the season were to end today, these teams would get in the playoffs. New England Revolution, top dog in the East. Who saw that coming? 16 4 and 4. Orlando City, 10 4 and 8. Nashville, 9 2 and 11. New York City, 10 7 and 4. Philadelphia, 8 7 and 8. Montreal, 8 7 and 7. And DC United, 9 10 and 3. And there's Columbus, 7 10 and 6. Followed up with Atlanta, 6 7 and 9. Miami, 7 9 and 5. They should be better. How many years has it been since uh, it was rumored MLS is coming to Miami? Probably about all my life, but there you go. Chicago, 6 11 and 5. Red Bulls, New York, 6 10 and 4. There's FC Cincinnati and Toronto, 3 13 and 6. It just depresses me every time I see Cincinnati there. I know the crew faithful that listen to this podcast laugh at me, but hey. Seattle on top of the Western Conference. We'll go by these quickly. Seattle, Colorado, Sporting Kansas City, Los Angeles Galaxy, Minnesota, uh, Portland, Royal Salt Lake, and then there's the playoff line. Vancouver, LAFC, San Jose, Dallas, Austin, second to last. Well, at least there's Karma in MLS and the Houston Dynamo. Hey, Anthony Precourt, if you're tired of Austin, you can move the team back to... Oh, wait, you didn't move the crew out of Columbus. Ha, ha, ha. I I did see something I wanted to talk about. MLS is having a Thanksgiving Day match, which is awesome. I mean, yes, you think Thanksgiving, you think American football, which, you know, I'm going to watch me some American football during Thanksgiving. But having an alternative, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And I know there's a lot of people like, oh, my God, no, not my Thanksgiving day. Uh, But, yes, they sound just like that. I hope to find the article on MLS.com. I don't think I will be able to. But I saw it on Facebook, and my good friend Jeremy Lance said that soccer Twitter says that's a bad idea. But 
I don't think so. Competition's great. It's too bad that, you know, that's not considered in Dayton media, but eh, whatever. I think, honestly, you have a good product, you market it well, and you let your soccer fans know, hey, football's not the only sport today. You know, I think it might be a ratings draw. Yes, I still agree that football is the majority in terms of drawing eyes, because how long has it been a tradition? How long has it been a tradition where Detroit hosts a Thanksgiving Day game? Um, I think it's the 60s, right? Sure, let's say that. But I, I like it. I think that's an honest-to-goodness you know, opportunity to get some new fans in. But we'll see how the ratings are as we head towards Thanksgiving Day. Blink, and it's going to be Thanksgiving. Then we're going to talk about winter sports. Not quite ready for that, but we're already in week four of high school football season. Which, by the way, that brings me to the next point. I can't add chapters on Hindenburg while I'm recording. That's swell. But I want to talk about my next broadcast of high school football. I've been off for two weeks. It's been a very long two weeks without football. The week two game at Loveland, that got rained down, and the rest of the crew couldn't make it Saturday morning, so... You know, I get it. And I also mentioned Dublin Kaufman wouldn't allow visiting broadcasters over, and that affected us twice. Uh, us, I mean ESP Media. Uh, Turpin visited Dublin Kaufman and won 35 to 7 in week two, as you might remember. Uh, Dublin Kaufman has this exclusive. Uh, uh, I, you know, I've never heard of that. I've never heard of where you have an exclusive contract and no one else is allowed to come out. I think that's ridiculous. I get where it's coming from. I'm not trying to bash anyone here. I, I still think it's ridiculous. But, yeah, I, I, I haven't seen Princeton football in two weeks, and it's driving me up the wall considering this is a team that's already put up close to 170 points that leads the GMC. And tonight they'll be at Lakota West, who has a very, very rock-solid team. Not quite top in Cincinnati in terms of all the schools combined, but Lakota West is up there. I mean, yes, St. X did handle them in week one, but at the same time, St. X is probably the best team out of Cincinnati, bar none. I know just Division One, yeah, they're probably going to represent Cincinnati in Division One, and maybe even win the state title again, which would be neat. You know, like I said, this podcast doesn't try to pick favorites of schools. I try to cover everyone equally. But, you know, I talk a lot of Princeton because that's the school I cover. And I want to see the Vikings do well. I want my high school football season go to week 15 where I'm calling a state title game one day. I mean, Lakota West, they're tough. That defense is stacked. And I, I think even with Princeton's offense, I mean, having a sophomore quarterback that's just lit up the field and Andre Parker, his first year at Princeton, I mean, Lakota West at home, and it's it's going to be a tough battle. I think Princeton can take it. The Firebirds are awfully tough. And Tom Bolden, he's been around the block in terms of coaching high school football. He knows what he's doing. Remember, he helped uh, continue the tradition at Colerain, which I was uh, a little surprised to see Colerain edge Mason because I thought Mason was doing for a good year. Yes, I know Colerain's Colerain until, you know, the dynasty isn't. But at the same time, you know, that was a very nice win for the Cardinals. So definitely, that's why I'm going to be on. It's on Flow Sports, uh, flowfootball.com to be precise. Uh, It's $19.99 per month or $150 per year, and it includes everything on Flow Sports, including the stuff I do and then the stuff I don't do, which is far greater amount of what uh, I do. But it includes a lot, and it means a lot if you watch the broadcast because we put in a really great product out there. So again, I'm at Princeton at Lakota West tonight, and back home next week. I think it's Fairfield. Twenty fourth, I think I head to Oak Hills, and the first I'm at Middletown. I think I'm looking at this uh, calendar above my computer. And I didn't write the locations down because I don't travel for soccer matches. It's just at Princeton. But 
that will wrap up this episode. Do want to congratulate Hamilton Westside Little League. They reached the championship game, fell to the Michigan team. The Michigan team hadn't won it since 1959, but it's a long way to go. So congrats to Hamilton's Little League team for making it so far and representing Ohio so well. College football season, the temperature's dropping until Sunday, where it's going back up to 90 again. Great. But it's been great talking local sports with you. I do want to thank you for listening to this podcast. It's always a pleasure to talk local sports with you and share my love of local sports. It's too bad it's not happening in Dayton, but whatever. Next week, we'll recap week four and talk more local sports. You won't find them on Dayton Radio. It's here on the Cincinnati and Dayton Sports Podcast. That concludes episode 219. Again, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Cincinnati and Dayton Sports Podcast with Lee W. Mowen. Be sure and bookmark SindayPod.com, the official website of the local Sunday Sports Podcast. From there, you can find your favorite way of listening to future episodes on platforms such as Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, TuneIn, Pandora, Spotify, the iHeartRadio app, and more. You can also find the Redbubble and Tee Public shops there too, where all podcast merchandise purchases go to help the podcaster. Follow on social media at Sunday Pod and the Lead W Mowen on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. This closing theme was created with the Splash app. This is Lee W Mowen saying thank you again for listening, and we'll talk more local Cincinnati and Dayton, Ohio sports next time.